2016 Sina Filipino Film Festival. His other books include the graphic novels Sumpa, Noodle Boy, and Two Alamat ng Matibay Children's Books. Besides being the president and a co-founder of Comicat, he's also the festival director of the Philippine International Comics Festival. Please help me welcome Mr. Paulo Heras, everyone. Hello, thank you, Sam. I love I love this, yes. Modern Barong look, all about it. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my bio note was supposed to be half the approval of what Sam read, but thank you for, for the kind introduction. I'm Paolo Heras, I'm president and co founder of the Comicet. Uh, we are a non profit organization that helps nurture and develop and grow the Philippine comics community. So I was asked to write a two minute speech. So I, I will read it from my phone. Filipino comics has a rich history, starting with Genkoi in 1929. Comics has two national artists, Francisco Koching and Larry Alcala, and many international superstars that are more recognized abroad than they are here, such as Nestor Redondo and the Eisner Hall of Fame winner in 2022, Alex Nino. In its golden age, big publishers were churning out weeklies or monthlies, bi-monthlies of comics that were found on street corners and even influenced our Southeast Asian neighbors until it could no longer compete with new forms of entertainment and eventually die. Like most art forms, Filipino comics was not archived. That's why we cannot find them anymore. But unlike other literary and art forms, comics is not studied in school, colleges, or universities. It's not recognized by some prestigious national writers' workshops or established award-giving bodies like Palanca, and it's not supported by NCCA because they can't figure out if we're literary arts or visual arts, and the answer is we're both. And because we're both, we're not on the priority list. And that's both by being both literary and visual arts, it's also what makes us unique as a creative sector. Sino supportahan naman kami ng, uh, ng mga ibang grupo. It's just that. Uh, hindi naman kami talagang pinaprioritize para kaming saling kit sa mga, sa mga programs, no? But despite all of these harsh conditions, comics remains alive and thriving in grassroots events supported by a community of comics creators, a handful of publishers, and loyal readers. Some of our comics are translated and published abroad. Some have found international agents and signed international book deals. Some were adapted on film and on stage, like Shasha Zaturna. And the most successful one, Trese, has an animated series on, on Netflix, making comics one of the Philippines' most viable and desirable intellectual property and original content. Now, there are several comics currently being translated in English, German, French, Italian, Dutch, Burmese, and hopefully more through the help of NBDB. Filipino comics is proof we can create a better future for our creative industry. All of these comics can be found in the Philippine Book Festival of the National Book Development Board this coming April 25 to 28. From our, from our cartoonists, such as the Samahang Cartoonista ng Pilipinas, Paul Medina of Puget Baboy, Filipino classics who started to reprint the lost works of Steve Gang, and Tarantado Kalbo will all be there. The PBF provides space for our, for our creators and publishers and PBF gives comics access to new readers outside our small bubble of our community. So we hope you will discover or rediscover Filipino comics and support local creators at the Philippine Book Festival. 
And on behalf of our community, we thank the National Book Development Board, Chair Kling, Executive Director Charisse Togade for seeing and believing in Filipino comics. Thank you. Thank you so much.